Hi there, Jay Tedeschi here, Senior Technical Marketing Specialist at Autodesk. Today we're going to take a look at frame design with Inventor Pro 2016. Let's get started right away. We'll uh, dive right in here to a sub-assembly that we are using to drive the location and length of all of the structural steel segments that we're about to place. There are many different techniques for creating this skeleton part. I personally prefer to use 3D wireframe. Um, feel free to uh, explore the different uh, methods of, of defining this. In any case, once we have the skeleton defined, the skeleton part, regardless of the methodology you use to define it, it's a matter of then selecting a standard, from this case ANSI, and then st selecting uh, structural steel components to place along those 3D wireframe segments. So as you can see, we started with the four similar, they're the same length, so four times that component. Then we place these two long ones, and now essentially we're using some of the editing tools to trim these to the faces of the other structural steel components. You'll note that we can select through the, the part itself. We can do multiple selections, so I was able to select both of those individual components and then select the face I wanted to use to trim it. Let's go back into the insert tool. Again, square section structural steel. We'll select the segments from the skeleton that we want to place these along. So there are the four new components. You'll notice on the browser down at the bottom where uh, component frame 0001, all of each of these structural steel pieces is being cataloged. So we are, while we are developing our frame assembly, we are in essence keeping our bill of materials accurate and up to date. Um, it, it knows, for example, every time I do one of these editing operations on any of these segments of structural steel, it knows how long the piece is that we're going to need for stock to create that component. So here we're going to trim to a single face. We'll select all four of those components, select the single face we want to use as a trim, and you'll notice that we were able to slice off the bottom of each one of those structural steel pieces. Right, let's insert another square segment. Select these four here. Hopefully you're getting the sense now that every single time we do anything to this frame assembly, not only are we updating the bill of materials, we are essentially driving continuity to a standard. Uh, that's the, the really beautiful thing about using the structural steel, uh, the, the frame design structural steel add-in in Inventor is its adherence to standards. In this case, uh, this is all being driven by ANSI at the moment. Again, uh, more of the trim and extend to face. Now we'll take a look at another uh, really nice editing command, and that is notch. Now these pieces right here have an actually fairly complex cut in them. Uh, there are other ways that you could accomplish this if you were not using the frame design uh, plugin, but you know, fortunately we have this available to us. So this type of notch cut is actually very, very simple. In fact, let's go ahead and isolate one of these just so you can take a look. Let me select right there, isolate. Let me roll this around. And there you can see the cut itself as a result of that notch command. Again, beautiful thing here is that it's all driven by standard. And if anything changes, any of these edits, any of these part sizes, any of the structural steel sizes change, any of those uh, edits that we used, the miter, the notch, the trim to frame, trim and extend, those will all update automatically. All right, let's place a rectangular section here. So you'll note that I can place it, and then let's rotate it uh, 90 degrees, and we'll just hit OK. Length, again, is driven by those 3D wireframe segments. Here you can see the actual sketch and dimensions on that 3D wireframe. Let's continue with some trimming to face. We'll trim these back. Remember, the, the, the main thing here is that we are prepping this frame assembly for weldment. So every single one of these cuts has to, we're keeping in mind the fact that these are, this is all going to be welded together at, at some point. Let's turn off the visibility of the 3D sketches and uh, continue on. 
So there's our frame assembly. And there it is in place in the top level. Now let's go ahead and open that top level frame. And now we're going to take a look at some of the frame analytics that are included as part of that uh, frame design uh, package. So frame analysis tool is really nice. As you can see, all of the junctions between all of the centroids of the frame elements are automatically detected. Uh, they can be modified based on the type of connection that you have. Uh, between the, you know, obviously these are all welded together, so each one of those blue connections between frame elements can be modified. We also have the ability to add fixed constraints. In this case, the frame itself is grounded, um, locked to the ground. So I'll select the location for all four of those. And now let's add an axial moment load onto this element right here. We'll select the offset. Now you know how easy it is. We'll select that and go in and edit so we can change the, uh, the load itself. Okay. Now once that's set, We'll continue describing the load environment that this frame assembly, this welded frame assembly sees. So we're going to now add a continuous load. Now, you know, keep in mind uh, that the mechanism, the machine that sits on top of this. So that is the load that we are emulating right now. So we'll change the magnitude of the load to 60 newtons. So it's a nonlinear load, so it's 105 newtons at one end, 60 at the other. We're able to adjust the direction of that load. In fact, we can adjust the direction of any of these loads. Blend to the magnitude. And now we'll enter a force again. Adjust the angle of the load. Again, adjust the magnitude and select OK. Now we're going to duplicate that uh, same series of steps over here on this the opposite side. The, the beautiful thing about this type of analysis tool is that instead of having to uh, essentially mesh each of the st structural steel frame elements, what we're doing here is that each of these green centroid, these are essentially an axis that runs down the center of each one of these structural steel components. And because it is part of the frame design module built into Inventor Pro, the, the analysis tool itself knows the cross-section properties of every single one of these structural steel components that makes up this assembly. So instead of having to actually do analysis on the the full model elements themselves, we're able to basically generate the results we need very, very quickly uh, in order of magnitude more quickly than we would normally by just using these beam elements that are essentially at the center or the centroid of each one of those segments. Now, once we have our results, we have many different ways of looking at it. For example, I can select an individual beam and look at you know, any one of a number, torsional load, shear load, uh, total force, total moments, normal stresses, all that information is available based on the beam that we select. So if we select something that has a little bit different of a load on it, you can see that that one beam element has not only a fixed constraint, but an axial moment on it. If we select another one, you see the di in the diagram it updates to show you the load and constraint environment that exists on that beam. We also have the this diagram tool that allows us to very quickly, if we select all beams or only individually selected beams, we can look at specific results on each of those selected elements. With that, I want to thank you for your time. I hope this was helpful and I look forward to speaking with you all again very soon. Thanks a lot.